In this video, we're going to keep building on the concept of the curl to introduce a new integration theorem known as Stokes theorem, which will allow us to choose between evaluating a surface integral or a line integral. And similarly to the divergence theorem, one side will often be easier to compute than the other. So we've been defining the curl of a vector field in terms of the amount of circulation of a vector field per unit area, the circulation being approximately how much push you feel as you go around a closed path, d gamma. And again, you can think of this as if you put a paddle wheel in your vector field and it rotates, then you have some amount of curl. The rate of rotation tells you uh, exactly how much curl you have at that point. And we were able to derive an algorithm for calculating the curl of V more efficiently than by calculating the circulation by looking at uh, closed loops in square form. Uh, however, these loops had to go, to, had to eventually become infinitesimally small so now we're going to generalize this idea to a body that isn't necessarily uh, infinitesimally small. So suppose we have some general body that looks like this, or a surface. And we're going to break up this entire surface into small squares like this. And the point of doing this is we want to be able to relate the circulation around any loop to the curl of, uh, of that loop. So this definition only covers the small squares. We want to generalize this result to cover larger areas such as these. So we want to now take this boundary as our d gamma. So all of this is our entire surface S. We break it up into small square elements, each one with an area delta SI. And to be able to calculate the circulation around our entire surface, the big one, does the same thing as calculating, adding up the circulation around each one of the little loops that make up the surface. So if we take a random square over here, for example, with boundary delta gamma i, and we add to it the circulation from this loop circulation from this loop and so on. Let's say over n squares that make up this entire surface. Okay, and the reason for this is if you recall from the video on circulation, if you have a big path like this, you break it up into two, one of them going like that, the other one going like that, any common boundary, for any common boundary, the line integral, uh, the uh, components of each one cancel out with one another. And by our definition, of curl from up here for an infinitesimally small, small square. So for any one of these circulations around one of the smaller squares, this has to be equal to the curl 
Happy. times the surface element of each one of these squares. So this quantity is equal to this one and the sum is just uh, translated from one line to the next. Now, as our squares become increasingly small, so we take this limit over here, that's the same thing as saying that the number of squares that you need to uh, constitute this entire surface goes to infinity, which means that you're now adding up a bunch of very small things. And you should recognize this as the definition of an integral. So we have a double integral because we're integrating over a surface. This is in the limit where the number of squares that constitute this entire surface goes to infinity. And once again, you need to keep in mind that the contribution from adjacent loops cancel each other out. So we found that the circulation around this entire larger surface is equal to the surface integral of the curl uh, about the surface enclosed by this path. And this is the essence of Stokes theorem. So it's essentially a uh, but I'd say a macromolecular generalization of our definition of curl. So it allows us to calculate the circulation around larger loops. And this is useful because we often, more often than not, deal with large bodies, large quantities of things in, uh, in physics. This is Stokes theorem. And in practice, what this does is it not only lets you calculate the circulation around larger bodies, but oftentimes one of these sides will be easier to calculate than the other. So if you are, uh, if you encounter a surface integral that has this form, you can try to alternatively calculate the closed loop line integral if it's easier or vice versa. In the next video, we'll go through an example showing how to do this.